Somebody said that ain't the only thing that's going to rise. Oh, I did say that part. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can we talk real in here? Because it's the truth. So you definitely want to be wise and use wisdom, amen, in those things. So fellowship is very important, amen. It helps to keep you focused. Amen. Friendship, get to know that person, amen. Don't look at them and say, okay, this is my husband or this is my wife. No, get to know who they are. Get to, 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 to develop a friendship with them, amen. Develop, develop a, a connection with them beyond that's my husband, that's my wife, beyond something that's physical, beyond all those things. Begin to develop those things. Amen? Begin to talk to them. Amen? And, and, and just get to know them. Amen? Praise God. So friendship. Amen? And then, of course, relationship. Amen? And we know that as we end up in, in relationship, that that is actually heading towards, amen, marriage. Bless God. But in all these times, in all this that's going on, these are still times that we need to be preparing ourselves and getting ourselves ready. So if you say, okay, this is the one God is is, is putting in my life and this is going to happen and that's going to happen, I encourage you, amen, to follow, amen, spend, uh, fr fellowship, friendship, and relationship, amen. And you'll find uh, that you definitely uh, will, will be able to handle um, you know, those kind of situations. It, 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 really, it really just helps. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, so that's that. Everybody got the scriptures that you need? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. All right. Amen. And the next one. Amen. Abstinence. Abstinence is so important. Amen. Because, well, first of all, let's just go to the scripture. Um, somebody get First Thessalonians chapter four, verse four. And there's so many reasons that abstinence is so key um, to your spiritual walk with God and being, um, you know, being single in the Lord, even in a situation where you find that you have the one who is going to be with you, you still need to be, uh, you still need to abstain from fornication, from sexual immorality and things like that. Because you don't want your spirit jacked up. Amen? Mm -hmm. You don't want your spirit jacked up. And then you also got to realize that, that um, the Bible really talks about fornication and it, it really warns against it because it understands how much of a covenant sexual intimacy is. Amen? Because that is a time when you are, you're coming together and you're becoming one. Amen? First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 4. And I'm going to start with verse 3. It says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Um, I'm going to keep going. Not in the lust of con concupiscence. Oh, somebody help me with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. So, you know, as it's saying here, it's to abstain from um, fornication and knowing how to possess your vessel in honor. Amen? How many know the Holy Spirit lives in you? Amen. Amen. So that's the first, that should be the first thought right there. Man, the Holy Spirit lives in me. My body is not my own. It belongs to God. Amen. So I'm going to honor God with my body. Amen. Because we have to know how to possess our vessels in honor and in sanctification. Amen. So that means that if I have to begin to do certain things so that I don't fall, if I have to begin to set up certain types of boundaries so that I don't mess up and I don't fall into fornication, and those are some of the things that I have to do, amen, in terms of uh, possessing my vessel in honor and sanctification um, so that I don't overstep those boundaries that I have set up for myself. Amen. Don't put yourself in any compromising position, um, things of that nature, because when you do, you're setting yourself up. Amen. And, and one of the things I always say is don't fool yourself. Amen.
Amen. And when I say that, I mean, you know, sometimes any virus says something, it's not going to happen, but you really knew it was. But you tricked yourself into thinking that nothing was going to happen. And you say, okay, nothing's going to happen when I go over here. we just going to pray. we just going to study the Word. we just going to talk. We're just going to, you know, that's it. But nothing's going to happen. But in the back of your mind, if you really unlock that door, it's looking for something to happen in some instances. Amen? Praise the Lord. So it's very important for us to, as it says, to walking in self-control and knowing your limits. Amen? Knowing what you can handle and what you can't handle and being honest with yourself. Amen? And don't be pressured into anything. Don't let people call you a name or whatever. Don't worry about how they're going to feel, what they're going to think. This is my sanctification I'm talking about here. Amen? This is honoring God with my body, and I can't take this body and just do anything with it because it doesn't belong to me. It's been bought with a price. Amen? Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, you know, sometimes you can ask yourself a few questions, you know, when, when you're invited to a, you know, a, a, a place where it's, it's going to be you and that person. Ask yourself, to be honest, am I attracted to this person? Because if you know that you're already physically attracted to that person, it can move really fast. Does that person like me? You may not even be attracted to that person, but if you know that they like you, it don't take much to stir this flesh up. And then you find yourself in a compromising position, wishing you can stop, but then can't. Or saying no, 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 but still extending your neck to the side. You know what I'm talking about. No, we can't do this, but you're still proceeding to kiss. No, we can't do that, but you're still touching and feeling. So you want to keep those things in mind. Please keep those things in mind. Like Pastor Mason says, you know, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We just don't want to do what we want to do with it. Because like Pastor Mason said, it was brought with a price. What was it brought with? The The blood. What blood? The blood of Jesus. When you're going down that road, can you please keep in mind how he was beaten, how he was scorned, how he was ridiculed, before you go opening up your legs or laying down with somebody and you say that you belong to God? Can you keep that in mind for a second that he died for you and suffered for you? Just so that we can be forgiven of our sins? Not so we can frustrate his grace, so that we can ever keep in mind that he did a great work for us while we were yet sinners. How lovely is that? So he expects us to, you know, receive him in our heart, live by his word, and be converted, be changed. So it's a high standard. Be mindful of those things. Does it mean we're perfect? No. But we should be striving for perfection and striving to please him. Very important, amen, to walk in abstinence and, and being able to possess our vessels in sanctification and honor. Amen. Allow God to keep you. Because you really can't keep yourself. But allow God to keep you. Amen. If you allow God to keep you, you'll be kept. Amen. Praise the Lord. What 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 does that what does that look like, God keeping me? When God is keeping you, it means that God is just putting something in your heart that says, nope, and then you just obey it and not override it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, bless God. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. And whoever has that can read it. A couple more scriptures that we'll go to and then we'll read right along. I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, Amen. So he says that if, if a man look on a woman, and I'm just going to cross ginger that because that's just, that that's men and women. Amen. Mm-hmm. It's not just for a man. Well, a man can't look, but a woman can look all she wants. Nope, the devil is a liar. 
Amen? But he says that if you look on them with lust, you've already committed the sin of adultery. Amen? So that we have to even have pure motives and pure thoughts when it comes to our brothers and our sisters. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, what if, I, what if I'm struggling in the area? Cast that thing down, put it under the blood of Jesus. And keep moving. Amen? How many know the blood is powerful? Amen. What Jesus did on the cross is powerful. Amen? And if God can't keep us, then nobody can. And I believe that he can't keep us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 through 20. Amen. You have to say amen. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meat for the belly, and the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Amen. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two shall, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The word is powerful, man. But you know what? It says that the body is not our own. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Christ. We've been bought with a price. Amen. Um, a couple of the verses there talks about being joined to a harlot. Amen. And it talks about what it's basically talking about there is is a is a tie, a soul tie, basically. Amen. Because when you come together, Sister Mason and I, because we're married, we have a soul tie. Amen. There's good soul ties and there's bad soul ties. Amen. Um, but when you are not married and you're joining yourself, now it's not just talking about a harlot. It's talking about any time that you join your body to someone who is not your wife or your husband. Amen. Well, what if God already said it? Then if God didn't do it yet, it's still wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. So he says here that when you join, you become one. Mm -hmm. Amen? And I'm not, not in every situation, but there are situations. And how many of us, if we would be honest, would say that there were situations that we got into with, with other people and we felt as though we, it was hard to break away from them? Mm -hmm. Amen? Why? Because that tie formed. That tie formed there. Your souls got knitted together. Amen? Through that act, through that sexual act. Your souls got knitted together. His soul went into yours, your soul went into him. Amen? And in most instances, uh, women carry the brunt of that thing more so than men do. Amen? Now, sometimes men do carry that, but women carry it more because women are receivers. Amen? Praise the Lord. So we definitely want to be careful. Amen. And honoring our bodies. Amen. And making sure that, you know, we're not getting joined up to, to that type of situation, especially when you're, when you're not married. Amen. It's, it's so important uh, that we flee fornication for those reasons. Um, because so many different things can happen out of a soul tie. When you, get a, when you get caught up in a soul tie, sometimes you have a person who could just go plumb crazy. Amen could really go crazy. I said plump crazy. <laughs> Amen.